procrastinators! This week, Activision Blizzard announced the result of their investigation into Activision Blizzard and found that Activision Blizzard did nothing wrong. Whew. I'm relieved. After all the reports of sexual harassment, shredding evidence, failed leadership, shockingly massive bonuses and suicide, I thought something was up, but nope. Guess I was wrong. Well, anyway, welcome back to the whitelist Activision Blizzard. I feel okay now talking about your games. So the game I'm going to talk about first is Diablo Immortal, which came out to mixed reviews these past few weeks. And by mixed, I mean that the websites that still suck on Kotick's dry, flaky tit gave it a good score, and people who actually play the game... Well, they've given it Metacritic's lowest user score of all time ever, and the reason why is best explained by Quinn69, nice, a streamer who, at the time of writing, has spent 22,000 New Zealand dollars, which is £11,382.70 British, on nothing. Literally, in an attempt to roll for a legendary gem, they've received nothing. Not one, zero, not a single legendary gem after spending 11 grand. Let's put that into context because as we all know big numbers are meaningless. My Steam account, which I've had for 14 years and has 1,598 games on it, is worth, according to Steam database, £10,977. That's £405.70 less than it would have cost to not get a fucking legendary gem in that thieving cunt of a game made by a bunch of fucking abusers. Fuck you, Activision Blizzard. When Microsoft finally take you over, I hope they pour acid down your fucking throat and burn the rotten centre out of you. Anyway, what else has been going on? Well, Fallout 5 was announced. Sort of. It's coming out after The Elder Scrolls 6, so, you know, see you in 2032. But in other Bethesda news, Starfield got its first big showing, and it was a little wobbly on entry, but mostly nailed the landing, initially looking like a fancy No Man's Sky, before revealing that it's got the largest amount of dialogue quests and handcrafted content in the whole of Bethesda's catalogue. The slight downside is that that content is spread over 1,000 planets, which is basically the opposite of the compact, dense worlds that we're used to from Bethesda. But hey, it's nice to try something new. And if it sucks, we've only got to wait until, what, 2027 for Elder Scrolls 6? And you can build stuff. And I fucking love building stuff. Right, you little shits, pen and paper out for this next bit, or wish lists if you're modern. I've got some upcoming games to plunk on your radar. First up is Terra Nil. I did a little stream on this a few days back. Basically, you have to use machines to revitalize a dying landscape, bringing greenery back to, you know, a barren world. But in a neat twist, then you have to dismantle all your machines, pack up and fuck off, leaving the landscape as untouched as possible. And inexplicably, this is the next video game from Free Lives, then what made Gorn, Genital Jousting, and Broforce. Is this... is this the video game equivalent of a detox? Hmm. Tile Cities is my next recommendation. It's £2, it's available right now, and if you're anything like me, you took one look at this footage and bought it instantly. It's an ultra-minimalist city builder about plonking down randomly generated city tiles and, you know, failing massively to manage the needs of a city. Also, Trams! The Last Starship is the next game from Introversion Software, then what made Prison Architect, and... Sort of, yes, it's Prison Architect, but in space! However, you can also control a fleet of ships, battle, fly around the galaxy, and basically get your Janeway on. I'm very excited for that one. And the final recommendation is Little Bear Chef, a game about a little bear-shaped bottle of honey trying to be a chef in a regular-sized kitchen. And if that doesn't interest you, then I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Um, who hurt you? And finally this week, we say goodbye to one of my favourite ever developers, Zachtronics, creator of Opus Magnum Exapunks, Infinifactory, Shenzhen IO, etc, etc, is closing its doors. Zach Bath's contribution to the gaming world cannot be understated, especially considering that he created Infiniminer, which some daft twat just flat out stole and called Minecraft. 
But worry not, as Zack goes off to do something, he says teaching, but I assume he's off to fight space battles a la The Last Starfighter, he's left us with a gift. One final Zacktronics game. Last Call BBS, which is actually eight games in one, because of course it is, lets you build factories, you're going to fiddle with integrated circuits, and for some reason you're going to be assembling robot models. Sure, alright, the only thing missing is this little weird spin-off of Solitaire. Oh no, wait, it's got some of those too. Thank you so much for the game, Zactronics, except for Exapunks, which I've still not finished, you bastard. And that's all for this week. Right, I'm off. I need to go and investigate who did that shit that I did on the floor. Hoping to blame it on either the dogs or Antifa. Ciao.